Congratulations! You've made it to the bonus round! Behind one of these three doors is a car! All you have to do is pick the right door. So what's it going to be? Door number one, door number two, or door number three? Door number two? Good choice! But before we open up door number two to show you what you've won, I'm going to open up door number one and show you that there is NOTHING BEHIND IT! Now, I'm going to give you the chance to switch doors. Do you want to stay with door number two or switch to door number three? You want to switch? Okay, let's see if that was a good choice. What's behind door number two? Nothing! Oh my god, that means behind door number three is the car! You've won! That is the Monty Hall problem, and I'm Philip Rokum. Let's see how it works. Let's start by going over the rules of the game. There are three doors, and behind one of the doors is a prize. In our example, we chose door number two. The host of the game, Monty Hall, then opens up one of the other two doors to show you that it's empty. He then gives you the option to either switch to the other door or stay with the door you originally chose. In our example, we switched doors. The doors are then opened up, and we see if you win. The question is, at this point in the game, when you are given the option to either stay or switch, what is the best strategy? What should you do if you want to maximize your probability of winning the prize? First, let's discuss the wrong answer. Everybody correctly assumes that at the beginning of the game, when they choose their door, it has a one-third chance of containing the prize because there are three doors, and they've chosen one of them. However, they then incorrectly assume that once a door is eliminated, that increases their odds up to one-half, because there are two doors left, each of which must have a 50-50 chance of containing the prize. To show you why this is wrong, I'm going to have you pick a card, any card. Good choice. What do you suppose is the probability that your card is the Ace of Spades? It's one out of 52. But wait. I'm now going to flip over all the other cards, except one, to show you that they aren't the Ace of Spades. We have the Ace of Hearts, and the Ace of Diamonds, and the Jack of Clubs, but not the Ace of Spades. It's still face down. So I ask you, which card do you think is the Ace of Spades? Is it this card? Your card? The card you randomly chose from the deck? Or is it this card? My card? The only other card that I purposefully and suspiciously left face down? Is it your random card? Or is it the card I left face down on purpose? For whatever reason. The truth is, the probability that your card is the Ace of Spades holds steady at 1 out of 52. The probability that my card is the Ace of Spades is 51 out of 52. The reason for this is that your card was chosen at random. My card was chosen on purpose. No matter what card you choose, I can always flip over 50 other cards that are not the Ace of Spades. There's nothing special about that. I mean, just think. 51 out of 52 times that we play this game, I will look at the deck in my hand, see the Ace of Spades, purposefully leave it face down, and then show you all the rest. Let's go rewind a step. At this point, do you think the Ace of Spades is in your hand? Or do you think it's in my hand? Your hand? Or my hand? Well, of course it's in my hand. Look how many cards I have. When I turn cards face up, that doesn't change anything. It just shows you where it is. Now you know exactly what the Ace of Spades is. It's that card right there. 51 out of 52 times. You might be wondering what cards have to do with doors. Well, you see, mathematically, it's exactly the same. Listen to this. Pick a card, any card. Good. The chance that the ace is in your hand is one-third. 
the chance that the ace is in my hand, the dealer's hand, is two-thirds, because I have twice as many cards. This remains true even if I reveal part of my hand to you. Even if I flip card number one face up and show you that it's not the ace, it doesn't change anything because I can always show you a card that's not the ace. All that's changed is that the two-thirds probability that the ace is in my hand now refers exclusively to the remaining face-down card, card number three. Here's how I like to think of it. One lump or two. Would you rather have your single door or both of the other doors? When I put it that way, the answer is obvious. Picking both doors is better than picking one. It doubles your odds. This is exactly analogous to the choice that Monty Hall is giving you. Since he's telling you which door is empty, he might as well be giving you both doors, since you won't mistakenly walk away with the empty one. Okay, enough with the analogies. Let's just solve the problem, beyond any doubt, in a nice, mathy way. For those of you who've seen my other videos regarding probability, you'll know that I'm a big advocate of simply listing out all the possibilities and counting them up. So, that's what we're going to do now. There are three ways the prize can be hidden behind a door. It can be behind door number one, door number two, or door number three. There are also three ways you can choose a door. You can choose door number one, two, or three. So there are nine possible ways the game can play out. I'm going to go through each one, one at a time. I'm also going to keep score in the upper left and right hand corners of the screen, uh, which will count when it's best to stay or best to switch. So, suppose you choose door number one, and it happens to be situation A where the prize is behind door number one. In this case, you should stay with your original door. In situation B, where the prize is behind door number two, you should switch to door number two. And in case C, where the prize is behind door number three, Monty Hall will open up door number two and you should switch to door number three. If you choose door number two, you should switch, stay, switch, and if you choose door number three, you should switch, switch, stay. There are nine possible ways the game can play out. In six of those ways, you will win by switching doors. In three of those ways, you will win by staying with your original door. It's uh, pretty black and white. Here are the final probabilities. There is a 0% chance of the prize being behind the door that Monty Hall opens. There is a one-third chance that the prize is behind your door. And there's a two-thirds chance that the prize is behind the other door. So to answer the original question, you should always switch doors, because that doubles your odds of winning the prize. All you really need to remember is that the door you choose is random, but the door Monty Hall chooses is not. This is what causes most of the confusion. Hopefully I've managed to clear that up for you. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Philip Brokem. Check out my website for tons of other cool stuff.